Okay. Perfect. Right. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Mr. Faisal as well. Thank you. Right. Welcome to the show. Now, how have you how are you how are you guys? Let me just begin from that big point. <laughs> How are you? Very well. A bit cold this morning, but oh, yeah? Uh, yeah, it's uh, g- g- glad to be here. Right. Healthier Hands Profit. What is the mandate of Healthier Hands? And um, maybe while you're at that, you can maybe give us an insight on how you guys came up with Healthier Hands Profit. Yeah, of course. So um, Healthier Hands is a non-profit organization that was set up back in September. Um, originally, we were set up and registered in the US as a charitable organization. And our mandate is, of course, to improve the well-being and welfare of um, egg-laying hens. So initially, we started by doing some research, looking into what could be effective and feasible ways to improve the well-being of the hens on the farms. Um, Then we continued by doing a thorough country selection process. And then, of course, that is how we ended up in in wonderful Kenya, Mm -hmm. our first pilot country operations, where we want to scope the country, see what kind of improvements can be done, collaborate with the stakeholders and really see what could be done to improve the, the farming conditions and of course the welfare of the hens. Mm-hmm. Healthier hens. Why is it necessary then to fortify the feed of uh, egg laying hens? So as you might know, feed is a major constituent of any farming business. Uh, in terms of cost, for instance, it can go up to 80% of the, of the entire Uh, production system. So it's obviously a very critical aspect of both the farming economics and of course it's the key input uh, for the animal as well. So we strongly believe and the research shows that there is actually room for improvement in order that the feed and the composition, the nutrients present in the diet of the hens can be optimized towards also the welfare, not just productivity of the animal. And of course, as you well know, a healthy animal is a a happy animal and Mm -hmm. also one that has a safe and high quality product. Right. Is this something you're doing with the uh, farmers individually or? Yes. Yeah, so right now we're scoping, we're meeting many farmers, mm-hmm. seeing what struggles they have right now, what, what knowledge and what capacity is missing. We're also meeting feed producers, of course, standardization bodies, government mm-hmm. officials to really see what is the landscape right now and where we can collaboratively jump in and really help to build up that capacity mm-hmm. and help the Kenyan uh, farming sector. Right. I'm seeing here that uh, companies like uh, Kempinski Hotels are read, have already announced that uh, you know, they were highly committed to sourcing uh, what they may call as 100% cage-free eggs. Yeah? And uh, maybe we can get into some of those uh, you know, uh, methods. Uh, there's a cage-free system and also there's a cage system. Maybe a, um, a differentiation first before we look at uh, how different they are from each other in advantages and disadvantages, Mr. Faiz. Sure. So... Um there are different methods of um, of uh, hen uh, um, uh, farming. Mm-hmm. We've got the we've got the caged. We've got the cage free. Mm-hmm. Uh, many organisations, as you rightly said, uh, such as uh, market leaders such as uh, Kempinski, mm-hmm. uh, Carrefour, to name a few, uh, have made a commitment to to be purchasing from uh, cage free farmers mm-hmm. uh, as as uh, um, as time goes on. Mm-hmm. Reason being because they've. Uh, you know they've sort of understood what the consumer requirement is, what uh, uh, the health needs are of consumers, uh, and uh, what what is the better what is the way forward mm-hmm. I- in terms of that. But um, yes, just to mention um, uh, to to try and define it in a, in a better way, uh, cage free would be the deep litter system in which um, the uh, the hens are kept in in different aviaries. They're allowed to move around. That they're allowed to uh, you know, they get their five freedoms. Um, a cage system is, uh, is, is, is very different. Uh, mm-hmm. It's against uh, animal welfare, it's against hen welfare. Uh, the cage system is, 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 is a system in which, uh, literally on, a, on, a, on an A4 size piece of paper, they end up, uh, some farmers end up uh, squeezing about two or three uh, hens in there. Uh, and um, uh, yes, so it's 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 against uh, animal this, welfare. This does affect uh, the products. Absolutely. So How it so? affects it affects the products uh, in terms of um, uh, the because the the health of the hen is not is not uh, optimal mm-hmm. uh, as uh, as Lucas was rightly mentioning, mm-hmm. and, uh, and 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 that ends up in uh, in 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 in. Eggs that are going into our bodies. We're consuming these eggs, which are not optimal, mm-hmm. uh, which are unhealthy, 
uh, and then in the long run we end up uh, you know humans will end up having uh, having health related conditions right. all of this revolves around the one health approach mm -hmm. uh, so farmed animals which are being consumed um, what uh, uh, if if uh, as as they as they are living in bad conditions then that meat that protein that's coming from the eggs is also affecting us and and our families right that sounds scary Mr. Lucas, <laughs> which approaches are you using to ensure that the welfare of this chicken then is well taken care of by these farmers? Yeah, so as we mentioned, it's, a, it's an integrated approach, right? We need to look throughout the whole supply chain. So obviously, first, the, our first stop is the farmer. We need to know what kind of knowledge they have, what kind of practices are widespread in the country. We're, of course, trying to integrate the, the knowledge that's uh, you know, coming from the global north as well, see what kind of uh, interventions could be applicable given the, the climate, the, you know, the breeds of the animals that are uh, used. But in the end, it will be a, a combined solution to improve the welfare. It, it doesn't just encompass feed, not just housing. It's not just about cage or cage free. Mm -hmm. It has many aspects in terms of let's say management as well, so feeding regimes, be it lighting, there's, there's so many factors that go into actually an efficient farming process mm -hmm. that of course uh, both the farmers and the feed millers, they need to be more in sync and really um, collaborate on a more open basis, we believe. Mm -hmm. um, so of course throughout our work, we're still doing some scoping and trying to learn what are these gaps these critical gaps that could actually help both the farmer, of mm -hmm. course, at the end, uh, the animals as well. All right. Okay. Over in Europe, countries like uh, the United Kingdom have already uh, begun burning eggs and uh, poultry products which have been raised from the cage system. And closer home as well, Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania have raised efforts towards burning and also are getting rid of systems uh, in which people are benefiting from the cage system of poultry farming. Why is there such a high demand? for cage-free eggs and poultry products? It's, uh, as you rightly mentioned, I think consumers are now becoming more aware of uh, the health, uh, uh, the adverse health effects uh, that, that happen when they consume these sort of farmed animals that have not been uh, well taken care of. Mm. Um, so it's, it's, it's a lot to do ab ab about it with a, with a consumer-led approach and also because now animal welfare is becoming more, uh, you know, s socially aware People are now becoming more socially aware of how animals need to be treated mm. uh, and how they need to, uh, you know, m meet their five freedoms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Is this information that um, everyone has or can get access to, or how do we ensure that more farmers, of course, are getting um, well aware? I know from where I come from, um, there's that lack of information on cage system um, from a certain region in the country uh, where I come from. That knowledge is not yet in court and there. I know most of my neighbors who have the, you know, as you mentioned, a small piece of uh, um, paper that has four hands and a feeding tube, and that's where they stay for the rest of their lives, and we still get those products. How are we ensuring, or is there a way that we can make sure that even that farmer at the grassroots is receiving this information? Good question. So, um, uh, part of our mandate is also um, about capacity building. So, capacity building the farmers, mm -hmm. um, sensitizing the communities, uh, people in the areas, the different stakeholders that are involved, uh, from the feed millers to uh, government agencies to um, uh, you know, regulatory bodies mm -hmm. to understand what, what needs to go into, go into this uh, animal welfare to ensure that uh, we're, getting, we're getting the right quality products. All right. Now, maybe lastly, uh, Mr. Lucas, uh, apologies for that mispronunciation at the beginning. Um, yeah, now, uh, a call out to maybe you guys who might uh, want to be working with Healthier Hands, uh, some of the farmers who might want to get information um, or reach out to you. How can they do that and what can they look forward to once they get into contact with you? Yeah, of course. Uh, obviously, we have our website, healthierhands.com. We're also on Facebook and LinkedIn. And as I mentioned, uh, we're starting to, to build up our capacity and, and beginning to, to organize workshops as well. I believe there's one in a couple of days just in, in Akuru County. So we're really actively starting to, to engage the different stakeholders. And yeah, just really happy to be here because we're seeing the, the, the mindset, you know, people in Kenya, they're proud, they, they care about animal welfare. Sometimes maybe it's a bit challenging because of course the economics play in and you have to compromise, but we're here to to help the make uh, farmers to, to help the farmers make the, the right choice, the choice that they want to make. Um, so I believe that yes, just through contact and really 
uh, working together, we can uh, we can together improve the, the the situation. All right, Mr. Faisal, your last words, maybe. Yes, uh, so I'd just like to re reiterate on uh, what Lucas uh, rightly said. Um, uh, a happy chicken, a healthy chicken is a happy chicken. And at the end of the day, we all would like to have quality products um, and also ensure that uh, animal welfare is also being addressed. Right. Mr. Faisal, country manager of Healthier Hands Organization, ensure you're checking out their website and also social media to be aware of the opportunities that are coming up and also the stakeholders to reach out. And also joining him has been Mr. Lucas with a very difficult second name. Um, <laughs> but yeah, he's also the engineer and researcher at Healthier Hands Organization. That is a conversation we had on the improving of poultry farming in Kenya. If you're a farmer out there and you've been using the cage system, it's time uh, that you improved and also took a look at, uh, you know, how to get your product into a standard that is acceptable all across the world. The European Union has already set, begun burning those uh, cage system or uh, poultry products and eggs from hens which have gone through the cage system. Closer home, Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda also are gearing towards burning that as well. So ensure that as you go into poultry farming, you're not left behind and also up to date with what is needed um, in the market. That and also um, if you have any feedback, any questions that you might have uh, on the conversation we had, uh, you can send them to us and I'll make sure uh, that they receive them and make sure that the answers are getting back to you. Remember we are live on Facebook, KUTV Kenya, uh, and also on YouTube, KUTV Kenya Live, where we shall be going on with the conversations that are still coming up, of course. And uh, what you should be expecting right next after this is Steve Biko, market research analyst, to give us a conversation on the effects of COVID-19 on the youth. Now that we are halfway through the year, are you still... Um, recovering from the effects of COVID-19 that shattered uh, major economic centers all across the world. The youth are being the majority of the population in Kenya, 75% as a matter of fact. That's uh, uh, pretty high to ensure that our welfare is well taken care of. So make sure you're tuning in for that conversation, the effect of COVID-19, and also later on, WRC, economic impact of the world, um, WRC safari rally that happened over in Naivasha. Now, before I go out, there's one thing you need to be aware of. The use of battery cages, which you just spoke about in poultry farming, has become popular in the country in recent days. The free-range style or the open layout system has been used for years and years in poultry farming. Debate has arisen over how the cages violate animal rights and interests, as we've rightfully just discussed here. Our reporter, Joy Pauline, was on the ground and filed the following report. Joseph Ngaira from Sukinau, Machakos County, is a poultry farmer with more than 500 poultry operating in the battery cage layout. Each layout carries about four chicken. It is a special structural design of cages made of cables and steel. Ngaira preferred this style because it simplifies work, enables one to raise several chicken in a small space, controls the consumption of food and water, is clean and minimizes the spread of diseases among other benefits. Sunaona tukiweka hapo hivi hakuna kusonga. Hiyo nyumba tumeikawa hivi leo iko. Eh. Haesi songa chakula inaipata hapo. Maji ni hapo. Mayai tena ni hapo tu. Hazina kazi nyingine mingi ya kusema zinatembea zinaenda huko na huko. Animal rights advocates as well as poultry stakeholders argue that it is important for poultry to be left freely to deal with their basic life customs such as walking, jumping, crawling and sharing sand among others. Just like Ngaira, Beatrice Njogu is a poultry farmer who keeps chicken with more than 500 eggs and is living in Gitaru Kikuyu. She embraces the open layout which she says it's a system she embraced from her parents. A cage with a capacity of 128 chicken and four levels where each cage holding four chicken costs a farmer 35,000 shillings. Jogu preferred the open system and she decided to settle on this method of keeping poultry as it required less capital. Okay, your uh, cages still it is expensive, sana. Kuleta hizo cages, uweke hizo kuku, lazima uwe na pesa miki ya kufanya hiyo kazi. 
Despite being an easy way of rearing poultry, njogu faces a number of challenges. So dust cakes up easily, thus there is need to renew the dust materials occasionally, unlike the battery cage, where the wire mesh are durable and last for longer periods. The Kempinski Hotel with branches in more than 30 countries around the world has embarked on a strategy to stop importing eggs from the battery cages and this initiative expected to be fully implemented by 2025. Quoting from the report, we are committed to safeguarding animal welfare and food procurement and our properties in Central European locations are leading the way to its commitment. Moreover, Kempinski added, we believe that our commitment to using the cage-free eggs will have a lasting positive impact on animal welfare and sustainable food sourcing practices where we operate and we will continue to work with our properties and their suppliers to swiftly further this course. In the East African region, Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania and Rwanda are campaigning to end cages in order to capture foreign markets as well as preserve and maintain animal rights. Should the campaigns from the animal rights activists persist, there is a likelihood of transmission from the battery cage layout to the open layout of poultry farming. Pauline Joy, KUTV, Kiambu. Hashtag Niko Chonjo. That's what you're using right about now on social media, Twitter. Hashtag Niko Chonjo. Hashtag Biashara Tuesday. And tell me how you're keeping up with COVID-19. How are you recovering? Or also, what kind of efforts are you doing to ensure that you are uh, keeping away from getting infected or spreading COVID-19? Have you gotten your vaccination? Use that hashtag. I'll be able to see it. How, how is your business doing? Is it recovering? Because we know that COVID-19 did shatter major economic centers all across the world. Nairobi not being the least of those actually still recovering uh, from that. If you take a look at uh, how we are doing in terms of inflation and also how the economy is performing as of the moment. That's not news I should be delivering to you. Of course, we are all aware how we are faring on as a country at the moment. Steve Biko, or popularly at uh, Soko Analyst, right? If, I, if, that's, if that's the correct tag on Twitter, you can find it and tell us uh, and ask him any questions that you have. And also myself at Richard underscore Kenya. We'll be coming right back to also have that conversation which we've been teasing since morning. Effects of COVID-19 on the youth in the country. How are we faring on? I know we've spoken about major, uh, you know, major effects across other sectors such as health, um, tourism, uh, infrastructure. But